Today I stand here to bring you a word from the Lord. God is good. Uh, to tell you briefly a little about myself, I am the pastor of Rise America Outreach Ministry in High Point, North Carolina, where I'm blessed to pastor a wonderful church family. Uh, and God has also given me a vision to establish an international youth outreach ministry uh, through providing curriculum materials and music and training to organize youth ministries and outreach programs within churches and organizations in different parts of the world. I've also been blessed to take the vision to West Africa, and I'm looking forward to continuing to do the work that God has called me to do there, and to join with others uh, in taking the gospel to other nations. And Pastor, I want to, at this moment, also commend you and your wife and your church family for the great work that you're doing in the community here. How many of us know this morning that we serve an awesome God? Yeah. And what He places in progress, He will bring to pass. Yeah. It's an exciting as well as humble place to be in your life when you know God is moving. And he's allowing you to be a part of what he's doing. And even though you may not know the details of how he will do what he will do, the one thing you can be confident of is the outcome will be great. Amen. I believe the words of David put it best because we should always remember that no matter what happens when God calls us, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. David would say the words that I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I believe without a doubt that there is a major move of God underway in many parts of the world, and here in Canada as well. I believe this is the hour when God is pouring out his spirit upon the land as never before, that the gospel might be preached and all of his children have the opportunity to receive salvation, to experience his love, and to, to receive the covenant blessings he has promised us. Amen. This has always been his desire, but I believe you would agree in some ways our response and position has in many ways been similar to that of the children of Israel. For even after God delivered them out of the hands of a cruel and repressive dictator, because of their disobedience and lack of focus. They would wander for 40 years in the wilderness and perish, never reaching the promised land. But then the moment would come when Moses, their leader, would die, and God would give Joshua the charge to get the people ready to make preparations. It would now be time for their children to receive the promise that God had for them. And that's essentially the word from the Lord that he gave me to bring you home today. Prepare to rise. Your time has come. Amen. There are two passages of scripture I would like to use for your consideration. The first is Genesis, the 12th chapter, the first through the third verses, and it reads thusly. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. The second passage is from Joshua, the first chapter, the 10th and 11th verses. Joshua then commanded the leaders of Israel, go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. In three days, you will cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land your God has given you. I believe most of us would agree today that there are many problems we're faced with in this hour, individually and as a nation. There are many devastating things 
things that have been allowed to develop and escalate in our world. And now it seems that there are no answers or means with which to rise above them. We're faced with economic problems, high unemployment, increased violence and crime, the continued threat of terrorism, and most importantly, far too many of our youth are going down a path of self-destruction and believing that they have no reason to have hope or believe in a bright future ahead of them. Even diseases that are being described as incurable are taking the lives of far too many of our loved ones. In far too many cases, we place our faith and trust in elected officials, in corporate giants, the medical profession, and decision makers of the world, only to be ultimately let down, disappointed, and cast aside. And while I applaud the many ministries that are doing great work for the kingdom, the fact is, in the midst of all of this, the church has in many ways remained silent on the issues that are destroying the moral and spiritual foundation of our society. Many are dying and perishing in the hands of the enemy all around us because of the failure of God's people to take a stand for the will of God and to let the world know that there is an answer. That the fact is, we've been given the right to take authority and rule over the forces of evil that are destroying us. It seems we've accepted and learned to live with every other option but the one and true answer, the good and perfect will of Almighty God. Amen. There are many even in the body of Christ who faithfully worship God on Sunday, yet live by and have accepted the guidelines of the world Monday through Saturday, never posing the question, what does God desire in the matters we face, and what would he have us do? We've allowed the world in many cases to set the conditions and standards by which we live, deciding what we can or cannot have, what we can or cannot do, failing to recognize that as children of the kingdom of God, that we have been given the mandate to rule in the mountains of the earth and to execute the will of God on the earth as it is in the heavens. Therefore, whatever happens on earth, though we may not be in a position of public office or one of the powers that be, as people of God, we have an obligation and a right to speak up. As a matter of fact, it is only in firmly, firmly taking the position God has given us that we will obtain victory. And just as it was with the children of Israel, God in his grace and mercy allowed us to endure and survive our wilderness period. But now the moment has come when he is saying, prepare to rise. Your time to receive the promise I made to Abraham and to all the generations thereafter has come. I believe on today that God has heard our prayers in the wilderness that he has seen our suffering and heard the cries of his people and is now moving swiftly in the universe to bring about change. I believe he has begun a shifting and restructuring process that the wealth and the power of the wicked and unjust might be redistributed to all of his children, Amen. that all might have the opportunity to receive the covenant blessings that he promised us. God is also placing in the hearts of many in ministry in this hour to teach and preach more again about the kingdom of God, that people might know who they are in the kingdom and the power and authority we've been given to rule over the situations that we're faced with in the world, and not just rule, but to rise above them. And while many have been devastated by tragic life-altering situations in loss of jobs, income, and health, many have also found the process to carry with it a great significance, and maybe I'm speaking to someone here this morning. In the process, they've learned who they really are in God. Many have learned the value of purpose over career, of service over power, of blessings over material gain of family over connections, and have begun to value the things that are really important and are coming back stronger and wiser, knowing in whom they now place their trust. Amen. 
I believe on today that God is doing that which he placed in my heart when he called me. And that is that he's building a nation that he can call his own. A nation who will do his will and will live by the greatest commandment. To love him and to love each other that all of God's children, black, white, Catholic, Protestant, Jew, or Gentile, might be blessed. that sincerely have a heart for him and the well-being of their fellow man. God is looking for those who are genuinely concerned in their hearts about the things that matter most to him, spreading the good news to the lost regardless of race, creed, or culture, feeding the hungry, and not just those who may be hungry for food, but those needing to be spiritually fed, feeding those who are hungry for the truth. God is looking to bless those in this hour who don't mind reaching out to those who are naked, not just from the lack of material clothing, but those who've been stripped of their dignity and self-worth. God is looking to bless those in this hour who are concerned that the prisoners be released from darkness, those who are bound not just behind prison walls, but bound by the everyday pressures of life with seemingly no way to escape. And yes, God is looking to bless those who will care for the widows and the orphans and lay hands on the sick that they might recover with faith in the healing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The question, however, is, will we choose to perish in the wilderness? Or will we be willing to do what is required of each of us that we might receive the blessings that he has for us? I will be the first to say, and some of you might agree with me, that this will not in many ways come easy. Some of us who have accepted God's will for our lives have already seen things unexpectedly change in our personal lives and careers. But by the grace of God, we have remained diligent, but somewhere in the process, we have received a peace and a conviction that surpasses all understanding. Amen. It was not easy for the disciples. It was not easy for the Apostle Paul. It was not easy for our Lord and Savior. But just as they remain diligent, so must we. Amen. I want to say to you, as I close this morning, that while it may not be easy, we must proceed in faith. Amen. We must believe that God is on our side mm. and move forward. Amen. Jesus knew that it would not be easy when he said the words, if any man wants to be my follower, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross and follow me. He's also given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and eternal principles to use that we might secure victory. Amen. And just as our Savior used these principles to obtain victory over the forces of the evil of the world in his day, so can we now. Amen. The principles I speak of begin with making the commitment this morning to the will of God being first in our lives in all matters. Amen in our personal lives and in the nation. But we must not stop there. The word of God must be the blueprint upon which we chart our course, but we must not stop there. We must pray and seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and wait patiently on the Lord. I hear the Spirit saying to us today in the words of the prophet Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But we must not stop there. I further hear him saying to us today that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal the land. But we must not stop there. We must also be, be obedient and trust God in all things he has commanded us to do. 
that he might open the doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open. But we must not stop it. We must do what is right in the sight of God in all matters, believing and knowing that God is on our side. We must seek to do good with our lives that we might not only receive God's promises, but be able to hold on to them. Amen. I hear the words of David saying to us this morning, Trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Amen. I close with the words found in Isaiah, the 60th chapter, and the first verse. And I urge you on today to seal them in your hearts, that you might be able to move forward and receive the blessings God has for you. And those words are, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shines over you. I say to you today, prepare to rise, Canada, Amen. for your time has come. Amen. And if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and walk in humble obedience, I say to you today that salvation will come to the land. I say to you today that deliverance will come to the land. I say to you today that healing will come to the land. 